The first of these is ALL, or Acute Lymphoblastic Leukemia. As the name implies, this is a malignancy that involves a very, very large number of lymphoblasts. These lymphoblasts will actually take over the bone marrow, and so you have a population of immature, basically immature lymphocytes overpopulating the bone marrow and replacing other crucial fragments. So you might see platelets getting quite low in these patients, so thrombocytopenia. You might also see them become anemic because of a lack of red blood cell production in the bone marrow. Now, there's an important cell marker that tells you that these B cells and T cells that make up the lymphoblastic lymphoma are immature. And that cell marker is TDT, terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase. And TDT is a marker that's only present on immature T cells and B cells. So if you take a biopsy of bone marrow from these patients and you have a ton of lymphoblasts in the bone marrow, and you check them for TDT and they're positive, you're dealing with ALL. Now, one other important cell surface marker of this cancer is called C-A-L-L-A, or CALA. And CALA stands for Common Acute Lymphoblastic Leukemia Antigen. Common Acute Lymphoblastic Leukemia Antigen, C-A-L-L-A. And this is not positive in all ALLs, but when it is positive, it's important because it actually pretends a better prognosis if you have CALA positive, a better prognosis. Now, ALL is actually quite responsive to chemotherapy, and for that reason, most of the children who come down with ALL, and it is mostly a disease of childhood, do quite well if it's recognized promptly and chemotherapy is started. Now, the other important test that we usually do on these patients to help us figure out their prognosis is to check for a chromosomal translocation between chromosomes 12 and 21. It's easy to remember because those two numbers are sort of the inverse of each other, right? So 12 is 1, 2, 21 is 2, 1. So that's easy for me to remember. 12, 21 is a chromosomal translocation that pretends a better prognosis in a patient with ALL. The next cancer we're going to talk about is called chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL. Now, ALL was more prominent in children, and CLL is actually much more common in older adults, generally greater than 60 years old. Now, these patients can have CLL for many years and be completely asymptomatic. So it's sort of one of these indolent cancers that takes a lot of time to get going. And the way that you usually diagnose it, see the presence of what are called smudge cells on the peripheral blood smear. You take a blood sample and check for the different lymphoblasts and lymphocytes that are circulating in the bloodstream. And you actually might see lymphocytes that appear sort of smudged. Their borders are a little bit blurry. They look like they were smashed down. When you see these smudge cells, you're thinking about CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Now, there are a couple associated conditions that you might see in a patient with CLL that are clues to the diagnosis. One is obviously going to be a lymphocytosis. So these patients may present with an increase in their lymphocyte count. That's one obvious one. One less obvious one is that these patients can actually get hypogammaglobulinemia, so a decrease in the amount of immunoglobulins produced by their blood cells. And because of that, they can be more susceptible to infection. And lastly, warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia is actually associated with CLL. So if you ever have a patient who's a little bit older, present them with a warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia, remember those are IgG antibodies against the red blood cell, you're going to have to rule out CLL. Now the next type of leukemia we're going to discuss is called hairy cell leukemia. And hairy cell leukemia is a disease primarily of the elderly. And it's a mature B-cell tumor that is interesting because it actually has these little tiny filament-like projections all around the cell cytoplasm. And they actually resemble hairs, and that's what we call it a hairy cell leukemia. The important thing you have to remember about this leukemia for step one is that if you stain it, it's TRAP positive. And TRAP is T-R-A-P, stands for tartrate-resistant acid phosphatase. These cells are TRAP positive. And the way I remember that, as I think about I want to trap the hairy spider. If you had a hairy spider in your house, you want to trap it for sure. And hairy cell leukemia is trap positive, helps you to keep it all together. So trap the hairy spider. 